Conway Select Board on September 14th at 6.03 p.m. Uh, as usual, conducted by Zoom and being recorded and soon available on our FCAT uh, channel, YouTube channel. Uh, one, one note here as well. Uh, I did include in the agenda that if we have to stop the Zoom meeting for any reason at all, uh, we can reconvene on our conference line, which is 369-1541, with the pin 1541 as well. Just in case we have to get off Zoom or Zoom doesn't work for some reason, we can reconvene on the conference line. And, and I'll include that going forward. That, that was as a result of uh, uh, something Phil updated with us with uh, last week, last time. Right. So Thank that's you. all I had. Okay. Uh, but and I'm sure whoever is trying to break into our meeting didn't hear you say that. So, so they can dial right into that dial in number too. So, okay. Yeah, but there's no video. So. <laughs> Oh, I see. So we so we'll just hear the porn, but we won't see right. the porn. So that's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> that's no fun. Tikva has no idea what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> uh, I keep hearing about it, but I've you know never experienced it myself. So I keep hoping, but you got to witness it firsthand, Phil. Yeah. Don't you don't want that? Trust me. No, okay. Okay. So first we have the minutes. Um, I. So the, the minutes of our August 31 meeting, which is stretching back there. Uh, did anybody, did everybody read them? I, I know Tom sent yes. us minutes. I reviewed. Yeah. They seem okay? Yes. Yeah. I don't have any changes. They were fine. Okay. So I make a... I the, will the, my, make... my only, my, okay, my only thing about the minutes and lately is, and I don't know when this started, but um, that we now, we're now being referred to in the minutes by only our last name. And if I could just pick one of my names to be referred to, I would be, I would pick the first, my first name, rather than all um, these. Kids. But that's just yeah. a stylistic. That's a stylistic uh, uh, comment. What, what and, we uh, meant, yeah. Well, what we meant to do was the first time we refer to somebody, use the full name and then be a little bit more formal going forward from there. Yeah, so I, that's just my personal discomfort, lifelong discomfort with being called Mr. Cantor, whatever. So. <laughs> Cantor. Okay, well, well, I'm not yeah. calling you Mr. That's true. Good to know. So, so Tom, I assume that's something that we could change. I prefer uh, to leave it the way we've been doing it for the last few years. Well, okay. What uh, do you unless, think, unless, you know. I'm sorry I mentioned it. It's that's that's silly. Go, that's just okay. go ahead. Go ahead. We're good. He, uh, he, he, I have a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Yeah. And, yeah. So. And that's from August 31st. Do you want to do the September 10th as well? Did you? Were there it wasn't in the agenda. Are we allowed to? I mean, yes, I would love to. You, you can do. Unless there's something controversial mm -hmm. and you want to. I hope not. Well, anyway, so let's vote on, let's vote on August 31 first. So all in favor, everybody aye. says aye. Yes. That sounds good. Um, and, and so, so the, the September 10th minutes were just from the meeting just a few days ago, very short meeting. Tom took the minutes and sent them out. Uh, we signed Conway's uh, denial of our negotiation with uh, Comcast and we'll see where we go from there. So um, I don't think there was anything controversial in the minutes. Did, did everybody read them? I did, yeah. So they see you. So let's let's vote on them. Uh, I'll make a uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, that we uh, all uh, support the minutes of September tenth. Second. Yes. Uh, say yes. aye. Yes. Great. So I think that's okay. Uh, so we have three warrants. 
We have a vendor warrant for $162,933.97. We have a payroll warrant for $119,198.05. And a payroll deduction warrant for $30,483.69. So did you, everybody look those over? Mm -hmm. Is he okay? Yeah, the, my only comment on that is that, you know, I looked them over and I, I had not realized until I really compared that our superintendent is not the highest salary earner in his building anymore. I don't know how I feel about that. Mm. So. Mm. True in a lot of colleges, you know, their football coach or basketball coach is the highest salary. So um, I'm not yeah. asking who it is in Frontier, but um, that's interesting. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we accept the, uh, accept the warrants. Uh, second. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Meetings attended by select board members. So I, we usually start with the, the newest member. So Erica, that would be you. How's your, any, any meetings to talk about? Uh, no, not since we last met. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. great. Appreciate everybody being able to come to us. That's, unusual select board meeting, but that's probably not, anyway, we already did the minutes. How about you, Phil? You you always have a million of them. Yeah, I unfortunately um, had way too many meetings. Just starting the, the day after the last the two weeks ago meeting um, of the select board with multiple, multiple um, negotiating committee, yeah, school com negotiating committee meetings to uh, and then we negotiated the memorandum of understandings with the Frontier Union, the Frontier Teachers Union, the Frontier IA Union, the Union 38 Teachers Union, and then the Union 38 IA Union, and also put in similar provisions to the policy manuals for the non-unionized employees. Um, and uh, that, and um, and then this, the, the uh, which, which you know. First of all, I would like to say that really glad that we decided to do the two years for our teachers union member just a couple months ago. That was a, but that has the, 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 the negotiations uh, over the MUA, which was the, which is um, a, a memorandum of understanding uh, uh, revisions to the contract necessitated by the COVID-19 experience we are all sharing. Um, and, and, you know, so ev everything from sick day revisions, because we want to, we don't want the teachers coming in sick just because they're not accruing their days as they were before all these everything it, it touched upon um uh, all kinds of stuff so the, the we ended up i thought um giving in a little bit not you know getting our way in a little bit just like negotiations usually do and then we met as uh, school committees we met the front with the frontier school committee uh, primarily to deal to discuss and uh, approve that the, the MUA, and then we met with the Union 38 and Conway Grammar School Committee meeting. And unfortunately, we did not get to take a vote on the MUA um, because our Google Meet uh, uh, conference was interrupted by a coordinated high technology hacking attack um, in, in which uh, multiple users using multiple accounts were simultaneously attacking the event. And so we had to we had to cancel it and shut it down in the middle of it, unfortunately, um, which made us all have to come back for another vote. Uh, um, so, so, you know, we did, we, we did, uh, you know, I personally went to our, our police department to complain about what happened because it was our actual school committee that, you know, the town school committee that this is what happened to us. Um, and the, um, uh, and, and it was over Google Meet. We did file uh, the IT, printed out dialogues of everything that happened and sent it to, to, Google, to the uh, Google engineers. And we are advised that October 1st, an update, a system-wide update is coming out that will prevent that sort of thing from happening. Um, but, uh, but if you've looked in the news in the past week, every single day featured some federal court trial being interrupted on Google Meet. Um, and, and, you know, it's all over. It's, so, you know, and because because there wasn't any actual like financial fraud that took place or anything like that, 
uh, we got the distinct impression that Google was not going to be sending a team of software engineers to do a 24 seven, uh, you know, uh, uh, reconstruction to try to find the culprits who could have been students at home, who could have been, you know, people in Lithuania for all, you know, we, you just can't, it's amazing how they can't track that stuff down uh, easily at all. But they did tell us that this would be like CIA, NSA, like next level stuff to figure out who did that. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, you know, it continued. We, we, and then we had another frontier meeting and another union 38 meeting on top of all of those meetings as well, which, um, uh, which were to, to, to decide policies on what we're going to do to have meetings that don't, that, so that they don't get hacked. And what the IT department and what the superintendent wanted to do was um, close off public comp, uh, the ability for the public to participate live, that they would have to submit written questions in advance. Um, uh, the, and then watch it, you know, uh, you know, you, so, and I objected to that, which everybody, you know, on top of everything else. So we're not doing that. We're doing something else, but I don't know what that something else is going to be. It might be having a separate thing on Google Hangout while there's a Google Meet thing going on at the same time. But, um, yeah, so, I'm t but it's just, you know, that, th that this would actually take place after all this like exhaustion and craziness of this past nine months or whatever, um, it just boggles my mind that, yeah. So, so well, this you was all starting on Zoom when Zoom first, you know, when the pandemic first started and yeah. Google and Zoom ought to figure, get together. I mean, Zoom has done a good job of, uh, of solving their yeah. problems. No, I mean, this was being broadcast live and all the teachers were watching it. And, you know, people were what's watching it on their television set at home with their families while they're eating dinner. Yeah. And we had we had to we had to spend the whole next day drafting a community apology and offering counseling services and setups where that would take place. And it just you don't want that to happen, Bob. Trust me. No. Yeah. OK, well, I had one one big meeting and that was the Conservation Commission met and and I'm not sure if how much the select board is following the Conservation Commission, but one of the things, and, and Janet is on, I suspect, but where uh, the, there have been a number of uh, attempts at finding a way around some of the difficulties to, to do some, some mitigation work of all of the invasive species along the South River. And, and, and the, the, the Conservation Commission, you know, we have agreed to really, ex to, to, to try doing it using what's called an RDA, which is a much simpler process. And uh, we're going to have another Conservation Commission meeting tomorrow. Uh, and, and I think that it's, we're going to, you know, we're going to at least try submitting it to the state and see if the state will let, let us do it. So uh, anyway, it was very positive. At least, Janet, I hope that you thought it was positive. But I was thrilled. Uh, okay. Um, public comment. So, Janet, did you say you had a public comment? Yes, I did have a public comment on the landscaping around the town office building. I know it had, I guess I read about it in the paper, and I just, as, a, as an individual and a hopeful participant in the new regional pollinator corridor that FERCOG got some funding for, as well as all our efforts, uh, on town and other property that there are milkweed there. I agree that it looks ugly. Uh, I think you would get rid of the ewes and you know, lots of, there's lots of possibilities and old milkweed does look ugly, but it is, uh, our naturalist encourages cutting it in July and it grows back and so i just before everything is ripped out and some kind of new plan is put in uh there should be some uh consideration of our our uh, longer term goals for habitat restoration everywhere in town that's my comment great thought we need more milkweed right oh. I don't know if you know, Janet, that we do have a volunteer uh, working on the on a plan for that. Oh, okay, and and um, you know you know the volunteer very well. 
Oh, good. Okay. Uh, so we'll be able to, you know, discuss it like all winter, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, but but the but the use ha the use got to go. Yes, uh, absolutely. And and that's I, I that, think that's that's that, the that, juniper, perhaps. Uh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. All right. Um, but that's that's one of those put a rope around. Well, them. they're overgrown. They're overgrown. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so old business. So I think we have a difficult task ahead of us on the forest stewardship plan. Um, but can I, can I turn it over to uh, Alex or is, I don't know, is Mary on here? But Mary, Mary is here too. So uh, um, can I, can I, can, you know, can I just turn this over to you? And I, I think that that would, you know, I, I, I'm not certainly not ready to to run this, but I think we do have one important task that we have to do, which is you are looking to us to create some goals for our forests, and 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 um, I'm terrible at wordsmithing things like this. So so my hope was that you might might. Have you know with 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 all of the high priority, low priority, we have some great lists. Um, we can take some of those words and and I would love it if if Priscilla or or some some people who are on here who have also followed this closely, if you would like to propose, you know, what a, we're looking for like a two sentence goal of how we want to manage the forest. So that that so in the, so everybody in the back of your mind, keep this in your mind that the one important job we have to do create here is is a short goal for each of our forests we're going to do this right online here which is a little intimidating so so alex it's all yours well mary i don't know if you want to jump in first here but the the idea is not to be intimidating the idea is to you know the the plan is largely written we'd love to talk a little bit about the revisions that we made that you all have in front of you sort of a cliff notes version of the revisions just to you know incorporate all the comments that you all have made and also that uh, all the people who participated in the August 26th zoom call have made which were you know a, a bunch of great comments and just fixing things in the plan that were off a little bit here or there you know the the vision the sort of write-up that we ask you guys to complete is you know of course we can help provide some language to make it seem good. But, you know, we've been doing that for a lot of the plan. So the idea was hopefully that we, we had taught you enough to be able to, you know, make a, make a summation and a, and a synthesis. Um, but obviously we can help. Mary, do you want to chime in there? Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy. They just, they r request that it's in your own words. Um, one option, if you can't couple up with anything, we can, Maybe just take, like, cut and paste out of the plan that was in the beginning sections. It listed six goals, all of which had to do with um, ecosystem function and ecological services and benefits. Or we could just sort of brainstorm. Um, things that I've heard very clearly from your community are you want to maintain forest health, enhance forest resiliency, um, protect the forest as a carbon sink, protect the habitat. Uh, oh, no. Protect biodiversity. So it could be simple things like that. I, 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 it, I do know that we had that pro forest station. We included that as a sustainable forest practice, the do nothing concept, and we set aside reserves. That could be mentioned in the goal setting. And again, just to try to keep it a couple of sentences. And if, if you're stumped, we could certainly do that, just cut and paste out of the plans, which for the goals that are stated in the plans, we took right out of the survey what people had to say at the meetings. And I did just want to reiterate what Alex had said. We took and incorporated every re requested comment from the Zoom workshops and the second and the August 17th select board meeting that we attended. And they, they are now incorporated into the plan. So 
So, Mary, will you want us to do this at the end after we, um, and I assume that we're going to be approving the plan. We're, we're, we're going to, we're going to be, to some extent, you're looking for signatures on documents. Correct. And if you don't feel ready to do it tonight, Alex and I do need to turn in by the 30th. That's the closing of the grant. But, um, we, yeah, we do need signatures and just that brief statement of your goals. If you want to review the revisions, I don't know if you had a chance to look that over. We were, we were, we honored the, um, the input we received from you after you had reviewed the plan initially. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, so, so you, you could, you know, take the, the couple oh. sentence write up as sort of a, as a homework assignment. Um, but like a, like a good teacher, we might call you back on Wednesday or Thursday and ask for it. Uh, can I make uh, a comment? Alex? Can I? Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm hoping that they can, uh, they can go through some of the, some of the changes, um, because that, that, that was a, you know, a detailed document that you sent out and I'm hoping you can at least hit, hit the highlights of those, what you think was the most important changes, but, uh, uh, okay. We know. can do that. Do you want me to take it, Alex? Sure. Um, in the spirit of sharing, I don't know. I mean, I could also share the document up with everybody if we, if that would be helpful. Oh yes. Can you do that? I think, I think that the host will have to enable me to do that, but, um, uh, in the meantime, can I put in just a couple words? Great. Go for it, Janet. Yeah, I participated as a public in the two sessions over the course of the time. I thought it was, I was very impressed with the quality of the work and the inclusiveness and how lots of things have been incorporated of that, of those priorities that that I think Alex and, and uh, Mary just went over. I didn't hear the, the, the public access and the recreational um, goal, which a lot of the participants um, were interested in. So somehow maybe you could combine that too. I think we want to do all those things, resiliency and biodiversity yep. and carbon think and all of that long-term planning for the future um, while improving access uh, and use by citizens something like that yeah right Mary and Alex Correct. yes definitely well, they, they were both listed in the in the in the important goals and listed as high priority in the list of list of right. goals yeah. for the park it's, it's an oversight honestly or, or demonstrating my true bias at heart. I, I don't know which, but I agree with you. They should be totally included. <laughs> yeah, and I think, Janet, you're talking about making sure that it's in the the, the thing that the select board. The, the, yeah, the yeah. two sentences, and, yep. Because it's, it's very loud and clear in the plan itself. Okay, um, right. So um, can everybody see the screen there with the revisions to Conway Forest Stewardship Management Plans? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, the, we have, um, so the way this document works is that, you know, instead of 140 pages, which is the two plans combined, we have the sections, which are obviously the same across both plans. And then if it applies to Fournier, it has an X on the page. If it applies to Town Farm, it has an X on the page. And you'll see that there are some things that apply to one, but not the other. Um, so, the, you know, starting with forest carbon, we kind of refined the language around there to really emphasize uh, setting this all up for a future carbon project. Uh, that seemed to be something that everybody was very excited about. Um, and we added some language around sort of the, the additionality concept, which is that, you know, you have to demonstrate that your management is doing something uh, that is additional and good for carbon, as opposed to just business as usual. Um, so we, we made those changes. Um, Can I add something more on the carbon, Alex? Yeah, this definitely. Um, why I included just each revision, there are nine that we did. This is the text that was inserted into the final documents. 
in each revision reflected an area of discussion or comment at um, the August 17th select board meeting and the second workshop. And one of the select board members has specifically mentioned, oh, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing as far as sustainable forestry practices is not inconsistent or countermands uh, a possible participation in a carbon project in the future. So we included this language just to spell out that, no, the things that you are proposing are really in alignment with your ability and eligibility to participate in any kind of future carbon program. And, and actually, that the concept of additionality, where you demonstrate that your approach, your philosophy of force management is like above the business as usual standard locally, clearly you could demonstrate that with the work that you, the optional work that you propose in this plan. So that's all I wanted to add there. You want me to take the next one? Sure. Okay. This, this one, uh, Section 3.3, .3, Sustainable Forestry Practices, um, through the course of following up and completing, I received a couple of letters, and I'm sure you're aware of that petition that's going around town. Um, in the approach of the, your citizens that are in disagreement with using your town force in any capacity for civil culture or forestry, standard forestry practices, I, I just want, they are using the fact that the survey indicated people were not in support of su sustainable forestry practices, but that was in fact a misinterpretation of the data that we collected. The survey and the comments and all of our discussions indicated that your community was willing to accept and implement sustainable forestry practices if and only if they support and drive the forest to the condition that is compatible with resilience, health, and climate mitigation. So I just felt it was really important to put that statement in. Somehow, I, I, I was kind of taken aback by the language in the two letters I received because it, it, was, it was using pieces of that plan to support one agenda. And, and Alex and I have been really careful to not be political, to not um, give our opinions out or our agenda into this process. So I just wanted to clear that because we proposed and recommended these practices because the voice of your community in our process, our community outreach process, indicated they were willing to consider these, these kind of practices if those were the results. So that's, that's the second amendment. And then the, the third amendment, the third revision we did was expanding the areas of reserve upon both properties to include a little more area to try to equalize more what would be um, active civil culture versus forever wild or however, I think we're calling it a reserve zone in the plans. So that was one of the revisions we did and that was, that was um, directly a result of our di earlier discussions. And the fourth revision we completed, um, it was brought up at the workshop, the second Zoom workshop, that it would be really great if the community made an effort or however, whatever mechanism your town comes up with to implement these things as you go into the future, whether it's kind of um, eclipsing this work into open space committee or forming a, a forest a town forest committee, that they make an effort to let people know, either through a brochure or Townway Currents articles, why this, this invasive work is being done, the plants that would be treated in the areas. And, and that, that was actually a really good comment. So um, the, the fifth revision we made was, it was suggested by unanimously at the, the second Zoom workshop that we create some language around optionality in the, the final documents whereby you could choose to do this approach or that approach. So the proforestation, the creation and preservation of lands as a, a reserve, you may take the optional approach to do it for the whole property. And that, that was the language that we changed was putting the optional passive approach that that is an option you may choose to undertake in the future. So we should go to the next one. And in that same vein, uh, oh, this revision um, 
there was a lot of discussion around um, having your own, like a community-based best management practice policy where you create standards for use of equipment on cow horse lands. And there was, a con there was concerns over um, equipment size, timing of use, and that these sort of factors be spelled out in a standards document in some way. So we had expanded the discussion under that recommendation. And um, yeah, so that was that one. The next one, again, in the vein of the optionality concept, whereby um, it was uh, my interpretation of the research and the survey and our discussions was many people in town and perhaps more voices were clear in their articulation of support for silva cultural practices, which would involve some formative or harvesting, but there was a clear voice that stated they, they weren't okay with that. And so in the vein of not really knowing which direction you want to go fully, we created optionality around the silvicultural based work also. Um, the crop tree release work, which we had discussed was taking crop trees that, which are not singularly defined as timber assets, but they could be unique um, visually appealing trees, unique wildlife habitat species such as white oak or black oak, um, rare trees, elm trees, aspen, actually you don't have a lot of aspen up there, for whatever, whatever your definition of the crop tree is to open their crowns for increased vigor and health. And we removed the concept of small gap formations. We originally proposed it. A technique that we do is you open the crop trees, but then you make little openings in between them for regeneration. And um, our feeling was after the, the group meeting and the workshop that that might not be a, a good approach. So, but, but certainly um, opening the crowns of the um, crop, those and crop trees would be a good approach. But we um, included it in the document as an optional process, much as the proforestation expansion, whether you do the whole property or not, or whether you do timber harvesting or not. Having it in the document supports, if you do want to go with a carbon project, you've got your um, forest management piece in your, your document. And that was the only way we could figure out, based on the discussions at the second workshop, to satisfy um, the lack of truth consensus, yet the philosophy of inc inclusion that we started the whole process with. And uh, I guess it would be the sixth or seventh revision. Mary, can I ask you a question in the middle of that one? Sure. Do you want to get to the end? No, no, you can, you can ask a question. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, yes, you're sort of characterizing a lot of discussions, but in the discussion about about crop tree release, I don't remember referring to the trees that we were removing as being called harvesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, the word harvest really sounds a lot like like lumbering or something. Um, and and I and I don't remember. Uh, the inference that the crop trees actually would be removed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the crop trees were trees that we wanted to favor, but um, which is why I think that no one wanted to think about, about after the crop trees are removed and then creating a little clearance. Uh, uh, I, I'm unclear. I don't think I'm understanding you. The crop trees that you would release are trees that are retained on site. These are trees that you might grow to their, out their entire lifespan. They're trees for which, for whatever reasons you may value and want to keep in the forest stand. Is that a little more clear? I, I guess. I, I thought you were implying that the crop trees, that, that the small gap formation would be created after the crop trees are removed. No, there's a technique that we use silviculturally commonly. And it, you, you say you're standing on an acre. You may pick 30, sure. 35 trees that have lush, mm -hmm. wide open crowns, nice mm -hmm. clean bowls, disease free, defect free, and you're choosing those to grow them for a long time, to keep them in the forest as your yeah. crop, as your, your stocking. And release means you may take two, one or two trees 
that are growing up in the main canopy where their crowns are touching those trees you've chosen to grow along time. So release means that it does mean harvest, yes, that you are going to select those trees and take them out of the main canopy so that the crop trees, your chosen trees to grow a long time, have room to expand their crowns, photosynthesize more, um, increase their vigor. Is that a better explanation? Sure. Yes, I, I think one of the problems revolved around the use of the actual terms crop and harvest. Um, and and if there were way, if there were a way to say target trees instead of crop trees, uh, okay. you know, so, something that that didn't make it seem as though they were ultimately intended to be removed. Oh, okay, I see. Because Alice and I, we bantered around the term focus tree, legacy tree, maybe. Legacy sounds good. <laughs> okay. And we can just really? define that in the text yeah. and why we're using that. Because you're right, Bob. If you work this plan as it's written or how you see is best down the road, if you went in in 20, 2025, 2027, Dang. you would not be coming back to that forest until 2047. So your focus trees, your legacy trees, that you take one or two stems away from their crown in 2025 to 2027, if they don't die or get insect attack or diseases, they will be growing in the woods. Yep. So I can see your term crop trees. That's, that's the term we use. So I'm, I'm used to it. And, and to me, it doesn't mean take it. But it, it, if you're equating timber harvesting or timber farming to farming, crop would sort of imply that they will go away. Okay, we got that. We can change that. Any okay. other questions on this issue? We're all, we're all set? We can go ahead in our chart? Yeah. Okay. Um, we realized um, we, hadn't really, we had spoken of it and alluded to it, but we hadn't really spelled out um, the use of the Fournier property for grade school educational programs. We had outreached, we had reached out in our process to your grammar school principal. She's very interested in when things get back to some form of normality to continue using the Fournier property as a natural classroom. So we felt the need to spell it out. There are lots of programs out there, Project Learning Tree, Project Wild, that help to um, for free to teach your teachers how to include natural history or environmental science lessons into the curriculum. So this revision was we spelled it out right in the plan so that you have guidance on that matter. Does someone have a question? So I, I do have a question about that, um, Mary. Just, yes. just the, the, I don't know if you recall the comment um, from the last, uh, the, the big Zoom, the last big Zoom meeting um, where Somebody uh, was, was was stating that the uh, highway boss for the town had not yet cleared a, a safe path of egress and ingress for the students and staff to get into the forest from the building. Um, and I, I do. do. So I just wanted to give sort of an update around that, and that is that the principal and the uh, facilities uh, manager, as well as Bruce uh, from uh, uh, Jeanette from uh, from the building all went, uh, tour, walked it with our highway boss, and he has a clear understanding of what he's supposed to be doing. I don't, but I, I do know that they, they've sort of upped the importance of it. They, they, they really want that as soon as the kids are back in the building, which I believe is gonna be the 23rd. Um, so, but, but there, there's, a, there, there's a big, there's a big uh, uh, em, uh, emphasis now on stay, staying outdoors and doing more outdoor stuff uh, and, so they want access to the forest. Um, yeah, we right right we, away. Longview Forest just did an amazing project for the town of Norwich, Vermont, like helping enhance their outdoor classrooms, basically in their town forest, which is exactly like this one. So it's super cool. Yeah. So um, was the resolution that they would clear the path still? Like they're going to attend attend to that? Y yes, uh, my. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, the, the path will be cleared within, but before the opening of school is what my understanding. Um, it, 
if if not, then the principal is going to be banging on our highway boss's door at six in the morning. So. Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of machinery that could be. Well, you know how kids are. They want right. to climb that. They want to mess with it. <laughs> yeah. No, but 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 a safe path has been identified to everybody's satisfaction, from what I understand. So. Awesome. They Great. just got. They just got to create it. Good. So I that's think it. the final revision that we did include was just addressing what you had reported about applying for the feasibility study and again validating that this plan as written, the sustainable forestry practices recommended are very congruent with that process if you move ahead with a carbon offset program. And actually, I think the data that we have, if, if the feasibility study is done in the way that others have been done that I have participated in, the data that we were, was taken for this process will be very useful for your feasibility study because they take this raw data and just um, convert it into metric tons of carbon to see what your stocking is. And so that could be helpful. And those are the revisions. And truly, they fed right out of our discussions. And we try to include everybody's voice, hence the creation of that optionality component of you could do A or you could do B. It, they'll both get you to the same place. I think no active management may be a tough sell if you want to go the carbon route, the carbon offset program route. But if that's the way your community goes, that, that'll be what it is. I do think it's important, and again, we've brought it up each time, as to think about some kind of mechanism to when implementation comes, even if it's as simple as the trail work. Now that you have a forest stewardship plan, you are eligible to apply right out of the gate. DCR has a community outreach grant program, and they do it annually. You're eligible each year to apply, and anything that's in this plan can be applied for grant monies. So you, you would want to have somebody capable and willing to facilitate that grant process and decide which project you should go for and all of that nature. So I leave it to you to figure out. I hope that we have done our job in teaching you value of your forest, the way to use it to um, meet climate challenges, <laughs> and uh, how, how you actually implement the plan available for all advice and, and excited <laughs> to see how you do it. So <laughs> those are our revisions. Please ask any questions that you might have. We have no questions, Alex. So maybe good. some people are still muted. You know, you got to unmute if you want to talk. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. And then there's then there's the goal statement. Oh yeah, there is that. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Well, well, I I have a small question, but. So on the page that's called has the signature, the stewardship purpose where we sign something, and it says yep. uh, the, like the landowner goals for the Fournier property, and then yep. a list of goals. Um, is, is is that a state list that you know? I mean, is that, a, a, that is a state list. Um, you're welcome to change it now. We filled it out based on the survey and our earlier discussions. If you feel some of the areas are incorrect, please edit. Well, what we would find correct or incorrect might be the, how they how they got rated, you know, and and you've rated them as to the best of the input that you got, rated them high, medium, low, which is correct. great. Um, the, the, for the especially for the Fournier property, what I don't see there is the availability of the, of the forest for the schools, you know, for education okay. purposes. Yeah. I'm trying to pull that document up. Does everyone have it in front of them? I don't know. You can share okay. it again with everybody here. Well, not the revisions. It would be that um, the landowner goals form. I think that's the one you're reviewing. That's right. It was that's a one page. Yep. yep. Here, I've got it up now. So uh, here it is. Oh, cool. Sorry about that's that. the one. Oh, OK, gotcha. So you're suggesting that we add, be 
because this is a Word document, the copy we have. We could maybe take out a Tang Green certification and put their um, sure. uh, promote and facilitate use of the forest as a natural a, a nature classroom. We could do oh, that there. That would be great. Okay. I mean, be, you know, that was just something that was very important, and yeah. and I would have expected it to. Have, and and you did mention it. I mean, it's in the it's in the the document, but yeah. Gotcha. So, is this something that we need to uh, craft and wordsmith tonight, or is it? Not tonight. No. If, if we could maybe set up a time that we could get it back from you by. What do you think, Alex? We need it in by the thirtieth. So. Yeah, I mean, if it could be by the end of this week, that would be great. Um, you know, just that would help us not bump up against scary deadlines. Um, what's what's the role of this uh, in the in this uh, in this you know plan? The role of the goals, the the two the role, or three sentence goals. Uh, the role of that is it's my understanding how it was described to me by Michael Downey, who is the Forest Stewardship Program Director, is they want to make sure that the owners of the property themselves have been involved in this planning process. A lot of times. You know, you hire a force, so they go out do their thing, they fill up the forms, and they submit them. So the Forest Stewardship Program is very, it advocates owner involvement, participation, which the whole nature of this project has been overlaid with your involvement. But, but that's why this form is included. I mean, what I'm wondering is if, if a number of us could write a couple sentences of what we would propose, and maybe I'll say, I, Say send it to Tom, and he could sort of merge them together. Or we could say send it to you. Um, uh, wordsmithing a document among ten people is complicated. Oh, that I, that's a great um, a compromise. If you do that, you get it to Tom. We can review it, and then he can maybe get it back so that everyone signs off on what that final text is before we we submit. How's that sound? What do you think, guys? And, and is that? Is that yeah, this is, you know, the point is that this is the, this is the landowner, which in this case are the representatives of the town, which in this case is the three of you on the select board. So it's, yep. it's, a, it's a very condensed, you know, we've done a lot of presenting of all the varying uh, values and goals for people. And this is have some examples, right, that Mary sent from, I mean, it's really short. It's literally just a couple of sentences. Right. So yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like your own little mini executive summary. <laughs> I think we could do that over email over the next couple of days. All right, awesome. thank you so yeah. much. All right. right. Uh, on that last, the last one where you're going to use that last line, you're going to take out uh, a, a green certification and put Correct. in education. Can you put something in about the um, recre recreational use? For well, there is already something there, Janet, where it says improve access for walking or skiing or recreation. Okay, okay. I, I mean, it, right. it's in this normal okay. state list. Okay, okay, good, sorry. But there was nothing there for education, which just, right. just you know, is, yeah. jumps out, especially for the Fournier property. Yep. Any other questions? I'm good. Good, uh, me too. Well, thank you so much for all your effort. Thanks. It was an honor to work for you. I learned a lot from this project. I, I really hope that you all learned too. I hope that we were successful in the whole part of the grant, which was to raise the awareness about what your forest values were and how you might manage them. So with that, I guess, do you have anything to close with, Alex? No, I would I would echo your comments. This has been great. No, yeah. so oh, I, one other question we would love to ask the board or Tom if someone can just write a letter of like support for the closure. We have to submit billing invoices, the pro the deliverable products of the plans themselves, 
in a report that we have to produce about what the process was like. And Alex and I would love to include in that report some sort of formal letter from the board um, that states, you know, did you like working with us? Did we do it? Did we honor our word? Did we you so piss you off? Were you sick of us in the end? But something that demonstrates that this process went well or went as it should have been, that we executed and delivered what you had hoped for when we started. That would be great. So as sure, a board, we would do normally that. meet two weeks from today, and that would be the 28th, and, and that would be time-wise okay? I think so. What do you think, Alex? We could just put yeah, it in and know, if we could get the if we could get the goals in the next, you know, five to seven days, yeah. Then we can kind of finalize the documents and everything. But if you could if you could provide a sort of reference letter by the twenty eighth, that would be wonderful. Great. All right. Thank you so much, so, everyone. I, I would just like to say that I, I, I for one um, was very impressed with um, with Mary and Alex throughout this whole process, their work product, their professionalism. But uh, also just very impressed with the way you conducted the, the town, the, the, the large town meetings and the way that you listen to people with respect and, um, and, and work to achieve a common understanding in a way that I thought was very Conway-ish. Um, so, <laughs> which is a high compliment. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, so I, I assume that, that final, uh, final vote of approval will be next, next time as well. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you. And thank good you. night. Good night. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Um, I've got another very small, uh, small suggestion while this is still fresh in your mind. I do believe they'd recommend in the process a, a, a forest uh, stewardship committee or uh, combined with a trails committee. Um, the open space committee believes that the separate trails committee forest and slash forest um, oversight committee or whatever uh, needs to be reconstituted. And I would suggest trying to perhaps recruit from among sort of known participants and a few other active state town forest trail users while while we've got the, while you you know as the report comes out to build on some of that some of that enthusiasm because you're going to need uh, and then is this your way of saying you don't want it to be part of the open space committee I, I, yeah i mean we certainly affiliation fine um you know and collaboration would be fine but you know actually like just the amount of work to to implement some of this. I mean, like trail signs and then applying, you know, yes, we can apply for, for maintenance or DCR, whatever trail maintenance work, but it's, it's pretty detailed. You know, you got to lay out the trails. People have to sit there with the maps. And uh, so it, it needs to be a committed group for that purpose. So if, if I can just speak to that a little bit, Jen. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's got a telephone and their uh, and their Zoom meeting going on together. Please mute yourself if you're not talking. Okay. Um. So so, so no. that's, that's Tom or else. Don't know. All right, it's better now. Um, so, so I, you know, I had had a conversation with Tom about forming a committee for this purpose before Mary and Alex ever really got involved with their their project. Um, ju just from the point of view of the next grant that's coming along for the feasibility study, which it, which there's going to be uh, need for more than just myself and Bob and and uh, to, to uh, and Erica to 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 work on this. And I think there were, we had talked about it briefly, but I think that this is something that the, the select board should really think about. And we should talk to Tom about, uh, we should have Tom's uh, 
I think he had some reasons that made sense at the time about why it, uh, maybe forming a new committee, um, a new town committee might not be the best way to go. But I, I'll leave it to him to, Tom, if you can recall our conversation and what your recommendations were. Yeah, in, in general, um, if the business of, if, if there's something that comes up that, that can fall within an existing committee, um, it can be better to enlarge that, that committee if they don't think they can do it. Um, I, I think we'll, we'll need to think about, about how this plays out going forward. I know that Trails um, has not been doing well within Parks and Rec. I think uh, Megan Gump was the last person working on that, and uh, she's no longer active. So uh, I, I could definitely see, um, and, and of course, that was originally a different committee to begin with. Uh, so the argument could be made it would actually be more going back to what it was um, earlier. Um, but, you know, the, we have trouble getting volunteers. So I think some of it will depend on on how many people are interested uh, in a, in a um, uh, say, trails and forests committee. And I would hope that they would work very closely with the open space committee uh, maybe even having liaison members, uh, because it, it's the sort of thing where, you know, it, it would be easy to step on each other's toes if you weren't, you know, part of the planning process in each in each committee. Um, but that's that's something to consider. Those are some things to consider going forward. Yeah, for, fortunately, creating the committee was not is not a requirement for signing this document. The document contained a lot of things to do in the future. Okay. So, so Tom, uh, would you be amenable to us sending a few sentences to you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, by, by the end of the week would be good. That would be great. And, and also to request anybody else that's on this meeting to send some to, to send in their thoughts. I see Priscilla. Yeah. I see Priscilla peeking over uh, her computer there at the camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. A anything else on the forest stewardship plan? So we have some new business too. So the first item on the agenda is appoint the assistant to the town administrator. Congratulations, Tom. Uh, yes, uh, Susan Fenton and I, uh, uh, well, you know, we've been advertising for several weeks now. We got two applicants. Uh, we interviewed last week, um, and I am pleased to say that both of us agreed that uh, Louise Beckett was the best qualified and uh, certainly um, our choice to uh, recommend for your appointment uh, as the assistant to the town administrator. And she's on the call. Is she on the call? Uh, she had been muted. Uh, this she is, is muted. So uh, Louise, you need to uh, unmute. Um, your shift bar or uh, star six on the phone. So, ah, there okay. you are. Hello, Hello Louise. Louise. Hi. Hi, Louise. <laughs> are you the phone call yeah. one that ends in 1180? Uh, yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. I don't recognize phone numbers. So. Yeah, Great. I was having a, a difficult time um, for some reason. I, you know, I, I just got a new uh, version of ESET, and I think that it messed up my ability to get online. <laughs> I could hear the meeting, but, you know, obviously it wasn't on. And I didn't think that it was really germane for me to be uh, uh, on the first part of the meeting anyway. Anyway. All of our meetings are just so riveting, and you're very welcome to come anytime you want. I was riveted. I was riveted. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is a tremendous, this is a tremendous development. And when I saw that email come across, I had to pinch myself. I didn't think it could be real. So um, <laughs> thank you, Louise. Awesome. Awesome, yes. for the, awesome for everybody. Thank you. 
if, if we do anything so, that gives you any, uh, if you have any trouble, just yell out. I mean, you know, we're all, uh, we're, we're, we're thrilled that you're, that you're willing to step up and do this and we want to make it work. Oh, I think we all do. <laughs> Great. So. So, I think I am going to uh, leave the meeting only because uh, I not only is my uh, PC uh, unstable, but my phone is somewhat unstable, too. I have to be in the exact right corner of the room. <laughs> so, well, if you don't need me for anything more. Thank you. Well, uh, they're going to vote. We're about to vote, right? Okay. I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a motion that we appoint uh, Louise Beckett as the new assistant to the town administrator. Second. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. And Congratulations, Louise. Thank Welcome, you. Louise. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> Hope that wasn't too painful. No. <laughs> Great. I'm still standing. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and 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 Tom, it's 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 impressive that you got two applicants for it. I do, I do want to share that for, you know our the grammar school the the uh, the position of um, weekend and evening and additional custodian didn't receive a single okay. applicant. Um, hmm. The for Frontier the position of long long-term sub for, for, for a whole year, didn't receive a single applicant. Um, so, yeah, so that was good. That's, that's, that's a good sign that you got two applicants for this. Yeah. Yes, and they were both qualified. Uh, Louise was simply better qualified. That I believe. We're lucky to have you, Louise. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the next item on our agenda is a uh, discussion with with Alan. Is Alan on the call? I am. Yeah. Hi, 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 Alan. Ah, there he is. Hi, Bob. Hi, everyone. Hey. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'll speak for myself anywhere. I don't know what this is about. Oh, all right. What it's about is that the um, a new person was appointed on the finance committee who never went to a finance committee meeting, and I never had any input as to this person. And my fellow finance committee members, you know, Rihanna McLeister, you know, Roy Cohn, and Tom Donovan, never had a chance to meet this person and you know, offer any input or be involved in any kind of decision process, which my five years being in the finance committee was without, without precedent. Usually you've had someone who was uh, interested come to a meeting or two at least. And then we, uh, as a, a committee, you know, make a uh, recommendation to the uh, town moderator. Uh, the most recent appointee. Second most recent appointee, I should say, uh, Rihanna McLeister went to the Citizens Academy and afterwards approached me for uh, her interest in the Finance Committee. Did attend uh, two meetings and then uh, we made a recommendation to being worked with Tom, 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 and I, the moderator that should be appointed, and uh, she was. Most recently, the uh, most recent appointee, I should say, uh, you know, I never contacted this person. As it turns out, this person is trying to contact me and had my incorrect contact information. I just found out after the fact that this person had been appointed to the meeting, the committee, me or committee rather, and uh, you know had never been to a meeting. And as a matter of fact, one of the first questions asked was, "I'm on the finance committee. What do I do?" So I was kind of taken back by whoever courted this person, you know, or people whoever courted this uh, as a member. Why, why, why? You know, I had a person in mind that I did share the town and moderator. This person had previously served on the finance committee is a parent of kids attending Conway Grammar School. And it's a CPA who does municipal audits. And I might add is also a woman, which I think is very important because now we have five older middle-aged males in the finance committee. And I was really striving to have a greater balance and representation of the town, as well as inclusiveness on the alum committee and our finance committee. I mean, Yana McLeister is a, uh, a new American, I should say new North American, she's from South America, a woman, and she attended Citizens Academy uh, about a year and a half ago for about a six months, how long, it, how long it lasted. And I thought that was great. So now we're one of only about 
six or seven of the 25 towns in Franklin County that have finance committees with that, what I call a gender imbalance. And I researched that on the, uh, it was one of my research projects. So that's what, I, what I'm, so what I'm proposing is that uh, the whole process be examined, how things were pointed. I think there should be more, more input feedback. I think there should be greater transparency as well. So that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. I'm not seeking any amendment formally to section four of the town bylaws at this point, you know, but it does say about the finance committee being involved somehow in feedback and in this particular selection. Um, I think the person's quite capable, but as further perspective, I'm 60-ish as a white male. Uh, Tom Donovan and Roy Cohn are 70-ish as white men. And the Rihanna is about 50-ish as a woman. And now we have a guy who's 70-ish as a male. I'm looking out 10 years. We don't have uh, much by way of continuity. And where I'm coming from is I really want to mentor the next generation and have greater uh, in inclusivity in diversity on the committee, I think it's really important. Really important. And that's that's my shtick. <laughs> okay. So so Alan, you know, I I, I, I guess I was the, the the person that got appointed. Um, um, I guess maybe first expressed an interest in your committee to me, uh -huh. um, uh, and maybe maybe to others as well. But I I know I forwarded his statement of interest to you. Um, and I know you shared a little bit about that at the time about what you're saying now. Um, but, but you did encourage me to, to have him apply. And then, um, the, 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 the next, my, my next, uh, awareness of any of this was, um, sitting down, having a pancake, uh, at, at Baker's on a Sunday morning and, the, the new moderator was there. And, uh, and, and he said, oh, you know, Alan forwarded me a name and, you know, with the name you forward me, it's great because there's two openings and now like, we, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to appoint both of the candidates and, uh, you know, I, I have, I have the contact number, I have the contact numbers for the one, um, but the, the, the information that I was given for the other, uh, but didn't didn't work. I, I need a phone number or whatever. And, um, and, and he was going to go home and contact the one that he had the number for thinking that he was going to be appointing both. That's the last, but I, I didn't even know who was the, the what, whatever. I, I took him at his word that there was two vacancies and that this is all going to work out. And I was thinking, wow, how lucky Alan is to have two uh, candidates. Um, so, so I, I don't quite understand like where the, where it got snafu'd at. Like, I, I guess there isn't two vacancies. There was only one. Correct. And, and, and but I, I don't understand why the moderator would be telling me that there's two. I don't know. A great mystery. Really, I'm, I mean, I'm quite uh, pleased with the, uh, the new uh, member of Steve. I think he'll be a great addition. He certainly brings a wealth of experience. It's just the process or anything else. And then my concern is, uh, I mean, I've asked every year, you know, especially of Tom and Roy, been on the committee for years and years that I want to get off. I, don't, I guess this place, I guess being the finance committee is addictive. They don't want to leave. But, uh, you know, I'll always bring that up, including myself. But ideally, it would be nice to have the next generation of residents in town be mentored along in the process so there's continuity. And if you're getting 70-ish kind of people on there, that doesn't bode well. I mean, uh, Given the average human life expectancy, you know, in 10 years, for a few of our members, I mean, they're, uh, whatever, enough said. I'm representing, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, but, but, I, but, but, you know, when I, I suspected when I, when I saw that you were going to be on this, Alan, that this might be the subject of your uh, yeah. conversation. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but I do want to say that I believe that there is an ability um, uh, uh, statutorily that e you can, have, I, I believe you can make the chair a non-voting position and still invite the other candidate then. Really? Um, I, I believe you're, you're permitted to do that. I'm looking at the, uh, or section four, what, what you It wouldn't be a, it's not a bylaw, it's a state, it's a state law because um, I, I know it applies to school committees because oftentimes an elected official like a mayor or something 
um, would, wants to be on a school committee and they do it with a non-voting membership and it doesn't, you're allowed to do that without expanding the school committee. So I, All right. um, I'm kind of loath to, I was always, when I went to the Association of Town Finance Committees, the one men, big mentorship we got was don't have even numbers on finance committees because you can get a draw vote and then you get stalemate. You should have an odd number to, uh, to, force, to force a majority one way or the other on a particular warrant or whatever it is that we're deciding. But I hear what you're saying. But I, th I, think, the I think it can be made that the chair is, n is non-voting and then you'd still be a five-person committee. <laughs> I think I the secretary of the committee then, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, but that isn't exactly uh, kind of exciting for someone to want to volunteer their time for that, but whatever. Well, Alan, a little bit of thought. I mean, I know in the Conservation Commission, where there's a lot to learn, and that's true of the Finance Committee also, um, they, they take on auxiliary members. You know, somebody or other that wants to come and learn and attend the meetings, and, and they're interested in hearing about all the stuff going on in town. And they, and then often after a year or two, somebody or other leaves the committee and then they become a member. Okay, uh, understood. All right. I mean, the person I had in mind uh, previously served in the Conway Finance Committee and uh, she does municipal audits as a profession. So I was thinking she'd be kind of a ringer to come on board and she's a 40-ish, not a 60-ish or a 70-ish, which I like because we need to have younger, young blood, right? Yeah. The dearth of young blood volunteerism and well, in all of America, let alone Conway. So I, and well just, just from past experience, I, I would say she's excellent. Then she's, she's really good. I um, like the fact that people who are in town who are engaged, in other words, raising family, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, these are the kind of people we want that this person would be interested in serving. I never pursued it any further because I wanted to talk to my fellow committee members and all of a sudden I found out we had an appointee and that Roy was not the person interested in leaving. That was misinformation. And I was like, oh, well, all right, whatever, drop it, leave it for now. We'll see what next year brings. But that's about it. I mean, uh, I'm not seeking to change the bylaws, you know, but uh, I'll certainly discuss it with my finance committee members when we start meeting again in a couple of months. Well, there's, a, there's an aspect of this that I really like, and that is that, that, that your committee is very, very, separate than the select board you, you, yeah. you, and 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 so if if so we would certainly not want to you know take a role in how you how the members get chosen for your committee sure understood thank you Bob. i appreciate that no. yeah. and, and hey bob the, yeah bob hey i hate to butt in it's hope here i hope but hey um but i've had my hand raised and i think mary parker is on the line but can't stay on much longer and if, if there was a time slot allotted for us i apologize i didn't see it but i i do want to make sure that um, she can't stay on too much longer and neither can i so if we can just be attended to it sometime pretty soon that would be wonderful uh, okay your issue well we had we had public comment a while ago but that wasn't any, no we were on the con for uh, the agricultural oh, oh, oh i see okay so you guys are you you guys are next so and, okay. and it sounds like 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 what that what alan is here to talk about so you're not proposing that you you want to try to change the bylaw alan. so so i know i mean i'll talk to my fellow committee members i'm, I'm all about consensus i mean i I don't see why not. I mean, I, I don't, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'll let you know. And Great. about the idea of auxiliary members. I like the idea of auxiliary members because uh, there is a lot to learn. There's a, there's a lot to learn. I mean, I, after year five, I'm still learning. Always more to learn. So, uh, you know, point well taken. I'll, I'll take it on. For, for me, I, I love the way that Jimmy moderates the pre-town meeting meetings and he doesn't follow Robert's rules of order and he will have to do that. But but, and, and I think this is one of the very first things that assigned, uh, you know, committee appointments that he's done, at least because he hasn't been the moderator for very long. This was the very first thing he did as moderator. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy and I both have like a learning curve here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I would love to have you and Jimmy have a good relationship so that he oh, understands. I have a great relationship with Jimmy. No, no, I actually meant Alan. I'm sorry, okay. Eric. But, uh, but you, you know, I, I don't want Jimmy to get off on the wrong foot for this very first appointment. Sure, that was good. I've been trying to get a hold of him. I, I think I have his correct phone number. I haven't, he hasn't called me back or anything. I don't know, my, uh, whatever, but I, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to talk to him further, but I haven't had a chance to yet. Great. Well, whatever. 
maybe he's listening. So please call. I certainly <laughs> left my phone numbers with him uh, a few times over the last couple of months. You, you might you try might his try email. email. So he's better with email? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Tom, it sounds like you're the echo. Right by his house. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. And I, I, I hope this. I hope this guy feels the, the, the friend, or I don't know what, what yeah, whatever. You know. Uh, you uh, know. Uh, uh, Steve, I, I yeah. I've met him. I don't know well, but we watched oh. a football game together once. It was, oh. and he was great as a football Tom Brady fan. So. Uh, <laughs> well, he took the uh, town of our, our Citizens Academy workbook, and I told him that yes, it has to study up on how the whole ta town levy system works and our tax structure, especially when it comes to things like levy limits and understanding. Oh my God! She said he did, and so I'm going to quiz him on it. Okay. <laughs> thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Bye. See us. So, Hope, the floor Hello. is yours. Hi. Hi there. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to see if Mary is Mary Parker is on. Are you still with us, Mary? You have to you have to press that mute button. I see your name. I see your name here. Yeah, Mary. Bob, are you the host? Can you unmute? Uh, uh, Tom's the host. Uh, uh, she's not muted, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not seeing a muted nope. indicator. Nope, not muted. Listen, I'm really sorry to interrupt. It's Janet, but I, I've got to go also. I'm sorry, Hope. This will just take two two minutes. I, uh, I think I was on. Tom invited me for this open space and recreation plan update, which is just a contract that they're going to sign, Tom, and I think that's all cool. Tom okay. and I have discussed it. We're going to do be the update committee. Okay. Yeah. Uh Phil and Erica, have you did you read that? It was included in the documents that we got. Yes, yeah. and it's it's just I mean it's really just something that we have to approve. But there's yes, actually there were there were two contracts with FERCOG, and it would be a question okay. of the select board signing that that the, this is work that we want FERCOG to do. Yeah, those both looked quite reasonable to me. Uh, I trust the work that the subcommittees have done. <laughs> I agree. And, and FERCOG has been great working with Janet yes. and the Open Space yes. Committee and 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 all that. Right, and they did the last, yes. And it's good. We've got an update committee and we'll, you know, they'll have hearings and get a lot of public input. And and again, I'm sorry, Hope, for interrupting, but that's that's it. Thank you all. So, so I'm going to make a motion that we sign both of the FERCOG contracts, uh, one for open space, one for COVID work. Yep. I, I heard a second, so... Phil, that sound good? Yeah. Uh, we all vote aye. Wonderful. So thank you, Janet. Thank you. Sorry to make you sit through all that, but some, <laughs> no, it was, was fun. Was, was fun. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, so how you doing? Is Mary there yet? I'm on the phone. I can't get my uh, computer to unmute me for oh. godly reason. So we I, hear I, you, I, Mary. I dialed in on the phone. <laughs> okay. Ma Mary, I have to use earbuds. My computer microphone doesn't work. I don't know if that's what's going on, but anyway. Well, I'm going to have my IT people come up. I have a few other little issues. Instead of frustrating myself, it's easy to pay someone to correct it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, okay. Anyway. So, yeah, Mary, why don't you um, – thanks for coming on. I'm glad we're both here. And uh, do you want to um, – uh, well, let me just ask, because the committee had a uh, the select board uh, – had a chance to look at our proposal of the four signs for the right to farm signs. Hello. I can tell you that I, I looked at your, your what you're proposing, and I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, I had. A, I mean, but are are you? You're not asking for funding at this point. Just approval when, for posting the signs. What, if and when funding. we're not asking for what um, money it, it, yeah it didn't look like like you're asking for the money for the signs at this point just ask no we, uh the, the we're a state we're at a sign we'd like to move forward but want um your select once then we can go to three or four different sign 
companies and get estimates for what we have in mind, then we'll approach you guys a second time. But we're having a just a little bit of a discussion among the AdCom at our meetings where these signs should go. And so we want to toss them into your ballpark and see what you felt about it. So um, our proposal was um, Ron Sweet said that in order to put signs up on it has to be a specific size um, for blockage of view and snow plowing. And I think it was 18 by 24. I don't have my notes. So, and if we do create them, he's willing to put them in. So the committee was thinking two small signs, 18 by 24, one at the junction of Bardwell Ferry Road and Shelburne Falls Road, so that as you enter Conway, you would see this one sign that says Conway, a right to farm community. There would be no picture because the sign is so small that you can't really get a clear picture and it, it just would look tacky. So we thought we'd just do the words. The other sign that would match that, a small one, would be on Waitley Road um, as you enter the town line between Waitley and Conway. Those two are very simple. They're easy to do. And like I said, Vaughn will put them in where he wants them so they don't get hit by equipment. The other two is where we run into a problem. Um, we originally had wanted to put them along 116, but that meant going through the state. They had to be set back 20 feet. And uh, when Jason Silverman was on the committee, he measured and one of them would have ended up in a brook and it, it just wasn't feasible. So the committee came up with a couple of months ago doing a much larger sign. And um, I forget what our dimensions were. I think it's in our letter to you perhaps yes. um, that we would encase the edges in wood. I would have, um, I have someone who is a contractor who's willing to donate his time and supplies. And we would like to put a sign on the triangle where Waitley Road intersects with Route 116. Now, that presented a little bit of a problem because that you would see as you're coming into Conway from South Stairs Hill. Coming in from Asheville, we really can't find a spot. We had thought about where the grist mill is by the covered bridge, but there's really no space and there's a guardrail that would block it. It would also get probably smushed up by the state snow plows with heavy snow. So I had one or two ideas here, um, and hope if I'm rambling, stop me, would be the one sign of the Waitley Road and 116 intersection, we make it double-sided. So whether you're coming into downtown or leaving downtown, you would see it. Or a single-sided on that intersection of 116 and Waitley Road, so you see the right to farm with its picture as you come into Conway, and then perhaps a smaller version installed on the little common where Shelburne Falls and 116 intersects, intersects, yeah, that's right, facing toward Baker's store so that if you are coming down 116 heading into the center, you would see it. So we're throwing that out to you. What are your ideas? Where would you like our signs? <laughs> Is there any possibility of putting them on private property? Um, haven't approached anybody. Um, I don't know any legality about that would be one thing. And number two, where were you thinking as far as being private property? Well, I was just thinking of right across from the cover bridge. If that presents issues right there where that grist mill is. There's a house right on the corner, right next to the church. Um, Does anybody live there? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes <that's> oh. <laughs> oh. What? I, who who yeah, lives there? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of maximum visibility. If that would be the ideal spot, would be right by the grist mill, but for whatever reason, it, it doesn't work out then that is something, I don't know, maybe we can consider that. Although, I, I mean, I do think right in the center of town, um, that, that little triangle would also be appropriate. Both of those triangles, yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, the, 
I think I confused everybody because when I think about it, there's actually three little islands in Conway. There's one on Waitley Road intersection, right. and then there's the one in front of the library, <laughs> and then there's the little bitty one at the end of Shelburne Falls Road. Right, in front of the, um, what, the Mason, the, well, it used to be the Mason's Hall. Yeah. Right, right. So what were you guys thinking? Where would you like to see them? Have you thought about sort of right adjoining to the large uh, uh, Festival of the Hills billboard on 116, which is just off of the road on private property? Is who owns that piece of property? It's who? If it's private property, we'd need to get permission. Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, we could. I'm not saying yay or nay here. Um, I just don't know who owns it. I mean, we can approach somebody. And yes, we could put one there. Um, you'd have to take into consideration sizing, too, because we don't want to bother, you know, interfere with the bigger sign. But that's a small point. We could come up with something. No, that's a great idea because uh, uh, that's a very eye-catching spot as you're coming right. up the hill. Is your eyes right, that's a great there. idea. Yeah, your your eyes already drawn there, so if something yeah. right next to it is going to get is going to get. So, okay, I, I don't know so, whose property that is, but uh, we the, can find, they, I mean, we can find out. There they clearly something. already yeah. allow one sign. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, we can look into that. That should I can just ask Lee. That should go pretty well. And, Would it be I, possible to mount a sign on the covered bridge itself? I, the, you wouldn't see it there. I mean, it seems like you'd want like the maximum, like if the point is maximum visibility, that was my thought with like, you know, inquiring about putting it on private land. Um, if for whatever reason it doesn't work because of the plows or other limitations, um, you know, places where we already have existing signs, but that are on private land might be a good, a good option to explore. I mean, we can check into whoever owns that little white house on the corner it, it would have to go i'm i'm trying to envision it i don't go here very often it's kind of on a hillside isn't it it's yeah it's it's directly across from the cover bridge right but it's a hill i'm thinking how high up if we approached the owners and said here's the size of a sign show them the picture and the wording and then say but we have to have it up far enough that it doesn't get bombarded with snow by those plows. Yeah. Um, so we can look into that too. Well, also, the, if you're if you're entering Conway, there, I mean, it would which direction would you be headed when you saw the sign? Would you be heading west or? No, it's north or east? south, right there. You'd be north. Yeah, heading north. Coming from Ashfield. Yeah. Wait. You want to be heading oh. into town and see right. that. Is that north? Oh, I thought yeah. we're still talking. Okay. Yeah. No, head, from Ashfield, heading into town would be heading south. Okay. So we want to we want the sign so that you can see it coming in from Ashfield. Yeah, coming into Conway. So wouldn't that be kind of a confusing, if it's on that side of the road, it would be sort of, it wouldn't be on the side you're driving. I, yeah, that's true. You're right. Well, we can look into that, and I'll try by it and see just how visible. What would our section, section second option be if we well, can't I mean, get permission or get it angled properly? In, in general, I like the idea of putting them sort of on the outskirts so that when people enter into town, that's the kind of statement that you see. I, I think that makes more sense than putting them in the middle of the village when you've already driven through half the town to, to get to that point. So I... But that's just, I mean, plus in the middle of the village, all, each one of those spots already has numerous other signs that are sort of a cluttered yeah. look already and, and would right. detract from the ability to see your sign, in my opinion. But um, that, that, I don't know. So I, I, coming into Conway, you'd be at the, the North Poland Bridge. Yeah. That, oh, yeah that's, that's an idea. idea. Yeah. yeah. That, that'd be a great idea, I think. And I'll, I can, now that, bridge that area right there um see i don't know if there's enough space and we'd be involved with the state again yeah. i don't know I let do us know, go up and look I, yeah. I do that, that as you're approaching that from ashfield there is a school bus warning sign on that side of the road 
And there's got to be space yeah. nearby for another sign, I would think. But Right, um, but what I'm saying, would we have to once again petition uh, the Massachusetts, uh, D, is it the DOT? And deal yeah. with them to get permission to put that sign. See, we were just trying to find spaces that Conway owned <laughs> that we could put signs. And I do agree. I would like the signs further out. And I think putting it near the festival sign is a great idea. Um, but I'm trying to think coming into Conway from Asheville, where there's private property on the right-hand side of the road so we can bypass the state and put a sign up before you're actually into Conway. Well, into the well, center of Conway. I would ask, right? ask, the, ask the Burnett's where their land starts. And I mean, they're very community minded. I'm sure Bill would, would, yeah. would go with yeah. that. Um, so I, yeah, and, they are. That's a great idea. You know, maybe we can get them. I'll talk to them and see what they'll say. Okay, so those are great ideas. It gives us something to go forward on. So what we will do I, you tell me how you want us to do this. Do you want us to find, get approval from landowners, then come back to you and say, okay, we have permission. Do I have your okay to go get estimates? Or do you want me to just, when I say me, I mean the whole commission, um, to just get permission and then get estimates of this for the signs and then approach you? Well, when you get estimates for the signs, is that an estimate just for the signage or for the installation as well? But Ron's um, going to do that, right? Ron's going to do two of them. But if they're going to be on proper, private property, it's going to be, we'll have to get volunteers to do that. Um, encasing the signs in pressure treated lumber so that the wood doesn't rot and making legs that are pointed so they can be put securely in the ground. Um, like I said, I have someone who's willing to build the the frames for the signs. And I'm sure um, I can coerce some male friends to dig holes and pound <laughs> them in and get it together. We'll do that volunteer-wise. I, 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 I would say, I mean, I support you getting estimates for the signage. And then, I mean, because that, it seems like that cost isn't going to change much, regardless of where we put the signs. Um, Correct. Work out where the signs go. So, and so Mary and Hope, if you could just like sort of, uh, I, I do know that there was a history of the select board not being in favor of this. And um, do, do you recall why or what, what, what that was all about? I have never heard that. No, I don't remember it being an issue. But, I, don't, I think the select board was never not in favor. I think the, the only issue there have been two issues one is we you know we haven't you know the we we met and then we disbanded and then we, the agcom is a fairly new commission so we haven't necessarily had a lot of momentum and then also just the question of the uh state having to get involved and they're hard to reach and so forth so but i mary correct me if i'm wrong but it wasn't that the select board was never giving the thumbs down right okay. no because because this is actually the first time we've approached you guys sending the letter when Hope sent you the letter and then this meeting. I, to my knowledge, um, including when Jason Silverman was chair um, and Susan, I can't think of her last name, Schroeder, I don't remember ever, ever approaching the select board about signs before. Now, we did speak to Ron and Ron was against, you know, he wasn't against. He just wanted the signs to be a certain size on the Conway roads and that he would install those. That's the only communication I believe um, we've ever had. In fact, when you go way back and we did the bylaws and we presented them to the select board, even uh, before it went to obviously town vote, um, there were no problems with our bylaws. So we've not, to my knowledge, in the last few years, ever had any negativity or issues with the select board. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and you know, the, I, I like what you were saying about the wooden border around those signs. I think that would, you know, one of the things that I like about signs in Conway recently, I think the historical commission um, has really hit it out of the park with their homemade 
um, just someone in their basement with a router, but making little yeah. wood signs. And I think that's really good. I personally think that's a really good look. And, and yeah. I love how, I love how that is cost free to the taxpayers. Um, <laughs> but, but not, not that I'm suggesting that because people, you know, you, 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 it's, that's not a reasonable demand for everybody, but, um, right. But, right. but, 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 but I do, I, I, I like that homemade look. I like the wooden look. I, I, I like signs that are non, that, that aren't just more of the same because they all just, they just look like a visual clutter after a while. And it, whether all, that, that's, that's, that's my agree. complaint about, that's my complaint about driving the state roads in, in our state. They, they're, what they require for standardization makes all the signs look the same and they just pass by in a blur. But, um, well, I would definitely support the Agricultural Commission going out and getting quotes for the signage and then just with the understanding that we still are trying to work out where these signs are going to go but it seems like you know i i wouldn't want to hold you guys up <laughs> okay yeah and i don't think there's anything we have to vote on i mean you're coming yeah. to us it's a, it's, you know to have a great conversation about it uh and some great ideas uh, right. i really love the little triangle in the middle of town that has the stone wheel and uh you know right at the end of the waitley road and okay and, I just, it's, I go by it every, you know, so many of us go by that either going to the dump or leaving town or, or, you know, going to the library or whatever. And is there room on that little triangle to put a sign? Yes, there is. Um, all there is is that uh, T, T at two homemade signs for the gift shop yeah. on Whaley Road and a couple other small there's some stakes there, which I don't understand, but that's neither here nor there. And the road, the small road sign, and just the grist mill, and a tree. This room. That's not, that location seems to pick up a lot of things. You know, people as far as people driving by, and if nothing else, being reminded that Conway, you know, is a right to farm right. town. Okay. Well, we'll keep that, and when we come back to you guys, we'll have definite placings in mind more definite now because we'll talk to landowners and um and prices and then we're going to throw it in your lap and you guys make the decision how's that <laughs> great <laughs> next time yeah okay okay thank right. you well, I thank, thank you. you thank you thank you mary okay. thank you night. have a great evening have a good night good night bye-bye so we have two more issues on our agenda. We're, we're getting, making progress here. So one of them was a vote to participate in the state's microenterprise assistance program. And that's in jointly with the town of Greenfield. So Tom, could you, could you tell us about that? Yeah, Greenfield went ahead and um, uh, applied for a regional grant um, on behalf of all of the towns and just needs towns to, um, to, uh, have a recorded vote of support in in order to start including us in um, the uh, the resources that they have available. Uh, some of these resources are also available uh, through the uh, FERCOG, um, but uh, this is a very particular grant for very small businesses. I, I'm not even sure how small. It may be like fewer than five employees, um, but it would potentially apply to a number of small businesses in Conway. And uh, so it's a great thing that they did. And all we have to do is say, yeah, we'd like to be included. Yeah, we'd like to be included. Yes. A formal vote, a formal uh, vote uh, and, the, and the minutes would be uh, appreciated. I, I understand, but, yeah, so, but no, no, there's no downside. I'm not hearing that we're on the hook for anything, that it's gonna cost money. It's just supporting this. Yeah. Yeah, it, they, they're, they, they got a grant to make resources available. All we have to do is say we would like access to those resources and then publicize them, you know, so that people in town know we have them. So uh, I'm going to make a motion that we, uh, that we sign in support of uh, this uh, micro enterprise assistance program. Second. Yeah. 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 Yes. Is that better, Tom? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Did, did we miss out on several of the other Town of Greenfield initiatives that are similarly like that? Like, did, did we miss out on the, the, were they trying to get all the towns to do the, participate in their community block development? We go through the, uh, 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 Franklin Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority for our community block grant. We, we are part of a community block grant program that does provide, has provided, does provide, and is providing um, low-cost forgivable loans. Um, actually, they're, yep. I think they're liens uh, for housing rehabilitation. And we're part of a four-town block uh, that gets those. You, you may recall um, about a year ago, I, I gave an update. We get quarterly updates, but usually they're not terribly informative, but they also send out an annual update. And I, I presented that the last time we got one. And uh, they've, they've helped uh, well over a dozen houses and family do uh, rehabilitation projects. So that's, that's our involvement with the Community Development Block Grant Program. We are eligible for some of those uh, funds um, but not all of them because some of them are dependent on, you know, how low to moderate income your community is and things like that. Uh, my impression is that we're getting what we can through the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. So we have one more item on our agenda. Um, and it's, and and, and again, so Tom, this is one that you put on after uh, I know that there have been some letters about this. The idea of do we want to have a drop box at Conway? So this would be a box that my impression is it would be kind of like a drop box at a bank. Y you know, you somehow open something that's very secure, be able to put something into it, um, maybe not as big as a, a package, but at least an envelope. And... Uh, and 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 people could pay their taxes with it. They could vote. They could, they could. Uh... So is it is it mostly because the hours at town hall are limited and people can't just like drop things off at town hall or the town offices? I mean, I guess what's the motivation besides? I mean, I don't know. You know, we we have not had complaints about that, uh, but we did have a complaint recently about someone who believes that her ballot may not have been counted. Um, and that was, um, she said she mailed it locally at the post office. And apparently we, our town clerk does not have a record of it having been received. Um, I personally am worried about our mailbox, you know, our, our uh, office mailboxes being accessible to the public because they're right there in the hallway. Um, not that I'm, you know, believing that any shenanigans have happened or even would happen, but the possibility is there. Um, it, it, there would be some, uh, some office logistics that would have to change and, uh, you know, we'd have to uh, uh, figure out just where we wanted it. I was thinking, uh, on the driveway, uh, so that a driver could could put it in um, from the car if they drove in the driveway, sort of in the front of the town office, and either back out or or go into the parking lot and turn around to go out. Some people might not want to come into the town office because of COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, there there is the issue of deadlines. Uh, we went around and around in the office um, with a number of emails talking about what the logistics would look like and finally decided that people would just pick up from it whenever they picked up from the post office, um, which is, it would not be too onerous a task. Um, well, everything's onerous in the winter. We'd have to make sure it was, you know, accessible. And of course it would be, it would have to be right next to the driveway. It would have um, to be something that's like physically secured to the ground. Or oh to yeah, the we, building. I mean, we we would have to have a have a cement block. Yeah. Uh, it would have it would have to be um, bolted. You know, uh, bolt bolted mm -hmm. down to that pretty securely. Like a nitrogen um, box or something. That's not cheap. Um, that's not cheap. Yeah. 
it, it is, it's not cheap. We don't have money for it now. I would uh, ask the Finance Committee for a transfer from the Reserve Fund as an unanticipated expense. Um, well, like I'd have to find... That, could it be a COVID? I mean, I don't know to what extent oh, yeah. access to these funds, but it seems like a natural COVID-19 expense. Yes, we would have to front the money for it. Um, so, so yeah, it, it could be it could be reimbursed from there, but um, yeah, so we, we would go into deficit to do that. And, and I, I don't think it's that much of a problem. I don't think it, it's just a, another a, another sort of nagging thing. Yeah, that's a that. Um, it, so uh, then there's actually buying it, getting it delivered, installing it. Uh, which are all possible, uh, there's only now, interestingly, about six weeks before the, the uh, November 1st tax deadline, and then the election deadline is only a couple of days after that. I am not sure that I can guarantee that it would be able to be done in that time. I can try to make it happen within that time. Um, and then there's the question of publicizing that it's actually available. Um, I still think it's a good idea in the long term even if we can't do it now, but I mean, starting it now and trying to get it done, um, I would I would support that, even though uh, we really don't know the details of, of what it would look like right now. But um, I would be happy to start those ball those various balls rolling uh, if if you thought it was a good idea. The last time this was brought up to the select board, we were actually being offered the donation of a drop box which the select board turned down and, when um, was and I, that was uh, four or five years ago Brian Kuzmeskis was offering to have one of his students at the tech school make one oh, yeah. and I think they just didn't want it cluttering up the front of the town office and they thought maybe people would drop things in it that they shouldn't like uh, geez yeah I think I think the Unabomber's in jail. I don't know. I was like, what? <laughs> what are they going to put in there? Tom, do we have any well, idea when we're going to have a special town meeting? No. We could, um, ask, we could ask for money at that if we had a good good sense of what it was going to cost. And and it, I mean, I'm not oh, yeah. hearing an urgent sure. need for it, but it would be good to get it moving. Well, to me, it sounds like if there's any urgency, like it's not this isn't going to solve the problem of urgency because we're six weeks away from the tax deadline. And, and you know, I mean, if we're just talking about taxes in the election. This is not a problem we can solve between now and then, but in I the long so. run, I would be willing to entertain, you know, I mean, po po possibly if it, it's one thing, if it's, if you're talking about, you know, a matter of hundreds of dollars, but it's another thing when you'd start talking about thousands of dollars, it'll be thousands. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. and I do, I do know from just from the Historical Society Museum wanting to display a, a particularly valuable historical artifact that we have to that, that has to be kept in the chief of police's safe um, because it's it's valuable enough that and, and the idea that they tried to to the bid out construction of a safe. <laughs> Of a, of a display thing that you know, burglar proof whatever and it was it was too much and it was too much yeah so, this, this would probably be on the order of two thousand dollars so not uh, is it a problem not that needs? Cheap. yeah is it a problem that needs addressing yeah i mean uh, like i think about uh, you know with the no matter like long 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 term the Conway post office is when, when you look at the fact that when they've, when they've made previous postal budget cuts, they've used the, uh, the, the calculation of how many pieces of mail go through each one and whether they're owned or rented. And when you look at the fact that the post office owns the building in Shelburne Falls, owns the building in South Deerfield and owns the building in Ashfield and they rent the building in Conway and, and, we already have zip codes that we share with two of those towns and people in our town get mail through both of those. Um, the writing on the wall seems to be all to me for years has been, you know, eventually sooner or later, we and hundreds of thousands of other 
similarly situated towns are going to lose their post office. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and then it would make a lot of sense. And as the post, the price of postage keeps going up, it begins to make sense if you're driving past the thing anyway. Um, but in time for six weeks in time to, to like just rush it, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't it doesn't sound like it's realistic, like in the short time frame. but it's something like Bob said, if it's, you know, at a special town meeting or, it, I mean, I think it's worth considering, but I don't think it's possible <laughs> in the short term. Yeah. It, it, it's a pretty quick turnaround for a project. Yeah. It would have to be, yeah. And, and, and for people out there that aren't sure if their ballots are counted, one, one good way is always to do a write-in candidate for one, ballot, for one el elected position <laughs> that only you can come up with. And, um, and then you get to see in the reported results a week later. And you'll if, know. If yours but, is counted. You just make and, up a name. <laughs> Well, but yeah. can, can I go get the uh, get the look at the who voted? I mean, you know, all of our names are checked off on. Uh, I believe you. Well, yeah, in the, but, the but if you, I mean, so I could because she because this one particular woman she wrote a letter to the editor and the reporter, um, and she had dropped off her. She yeah she she sent her ballot by mail and but for the primary, um, but I guess my I, you know I was like well if you ballot if you know that it didn't get counted like maybe just go vote and the you know but is that does that count as like <laughs> voting twice is that a like if you mail in your you know your ballot and you know for a fact that it didn't get counted are you, you not you make a provisional ballot in person and you tell the people there Correct. what's yeah, going on. So. Yeah, I feel like, for, I mean, fortunately, in Con like, you can do that in Conway. We're a small enough town where, like, you know, I like, all those poll workers take their job very seriously. But she could find out today whether or not her mailed-in ballot actually got counted by looking at her name on the voter roll. Yeah. Whether it got checked or not. Well, I think that was her, that was her point, was that it, it her, her vote in the primary election, like, her, her ballot got lost, and that was her concern. That she dropped it in the post bo post office box here in Conway and oh well, my assumption was and I mean I mailed in my ballot and then a couple weeks later I went online to the the uh, and and looked to see whether or not I had voted and it said I had voted and this was a month before the election uh, yeah in other words you know you can find out whether your ballot has been received right anyway so Lori has your ballot and and and, and at that point I trusted it got my ballot got voted and maybe her name had not popped up at the time she did that, but it. it yeah, well, I hope she it, keeps checking. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're, we're just a few weeks away from early voting starting in our state. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my kids are voting so, by mail. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so why don't I um, at, at least, you know, find out what it would take and bring that back to you at your next meeting um, so that you know, you right. know. Uh, the details at that point. Okay. So we'll, we'll 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 table that. I mean, it it it, it yeah. didn't, it's just a good. proposal. So. Okay. Items not anticipated. Are there any items not anticipated within forty eight hours? No, I, I don't have any. I have no items. So Tom, an update. Yeah. Um, I have a few things here. Uh. The State uh, Department of Revenue has issued preliminary free cash certification based only on free cash turnover from the last fiscal year. Conway's free cash turnover has been certified at $196,527. This can be spent only on COVID-19 expenses until the whole of free cash is certified, probably later in September or October. We don't have anything we need that for. Uh, at that point, budget overages will also be included, and since spending was substantially reduced in the last few months of fiscal year 2020, uh, I expect we will have more free cash than usual. Uh, I had been aiming for just $100,000 in free cash turnover, um, but as you'll recall, the select board wanted to maximize flexible funds mostly free cash versus stabilization funds 
to maintain a nimble position in the case of a substantial reduction in state local aid. Delicately uh, phrased. A note. I'm sorry. Delicately phrased. Well done. Yeah. Um, a note from MEMA on drought. Uh, due to above normal temperatures throughout July and early August and more than three months of below normal rainfall, Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary Kathleen Theo Herides declared a level two significant drought in all seven regions of the Commonwealth at a level two significant drought as outlined in the Massachusetts Drought Management Plan. Conditions are becoming significantly dry and warrant detailed monitoring of drought conditions, close coordination among state and federal agencies, emphasis on water conservation, more stringent watering restrictions, and technical outreach and assistance for the affected municipalities. Right now, the Connecticut River Valley is doing better than most areas, so that's just for your information. Have we heard about any wells going dry? Everybody, like anecdotally, there's it's many, many, and if they're not dry, they're running out and then needing to be sh no water while they recharge, and that's yeah. really that's super common. Yeah, um, like my, I mowed my lawn this weekend, and it was the fourth time this summer, like four times I've mowed my lawn. I haven't had to. Yeah, it's not growing. It's been months. So uh, Ron Sweet reports in his response to the complaint about old plows and other equipment that he did move the equipment and does intend to use some of the parts from the old equipment. Uh, he has not had time to do that yet, but does have it on his list of tasks. He also notes that there is no hydraulic fluid uh, in the equipment to leak, so that is thankfully not a concern. He is preparing a written statement on his plans for the equipment. Great. Uh, Con Conway Youth Sports has noticed some interest in starting up soccer practices in town, not games, but practices only one day a week for each team. They aren't planning to charge a fee, but they will still need to have parents sign the standard waiver for Conway Youth Sports. In addition, they have adopted Deerfield's coronavirus waiver and we'll have parents sign that as well. Good idea. I heard from Coles that they are no longer using the landing site, so that problem is temporarily solved. One other item is important. The landing site was on state land, not town land, which I verified as the way they proposed it in their cutting plan, which the town gets a copy of. So no role for the town in that particular part of the dispute. And finally, I am pleased to announce that Conway's grant proposal for a study on the possibility of carbon storage has been awarded for $20,000. Hey. Congratulations to Phil, who had Way the vision and made it happen. That's great, Phil. Fight the power. <laughs> That's it for me. So, t t um, thank, thanks, Tom. Just, just um, going back to the Ron and the, the, the did, did you uh, speak with him about completing the pathway access that, because uh, um, I, I, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't speak to him directly. I've just been going through the principal and everybody at the school. Um, but I do know that that's super important to everybody. And um, I, I, I believe that's been made clear to him and that he has the, that, that he said, I, I don't know whether he's done it already, but about creating that safe access for the kids, that's just really important that that be done by the time school opens. So, well, it's um, open. I am not sure that he's going to be able to do that. He he did he did tell me he met with them and that he's aware of um, what they want. Yeah, yeah. He's got to do that. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's got to do a lot of things. Yep. So the school feels that he made a commitment to them? Um, yeah. The, the, it's, yeah, it's, it's something that um, has been in the works for a while and has been promised for a while. Let's just put it, let's put it that way. And um, it's something that they're counting on.
because they don't have a choice because you got and especially it's it's really for the older kids because of of the breakdown in terms of the teachers that want to be in that building three through six all want to be in that building and they're the ones that are going to be marching those kids out there um and and have always in the past too there's big chunks of their curriculum that they've always put out there and it's always especially in the beginning of the year while you can still get out there so um do you think you could get a date from ron um no uh he 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 does a lot by what um the weather is requiring and and other things of course his primary responsibility is to the roads and yeah. this is his busy time for that um uh, I know that he understands that they want the path. I will check that he understands that they want it um, when school opens. So, okay. Yeah. So next on our agenda is mail. Do we have any mail? I don't have any mail. Great. Any announcements? Not really announcements. Um, I do. I just, just. Um, I don't know whether this is also concerns or if that's next or whatever. But um, just after week upon week after a week of meetings, where it's been pointed out to me that I'm ordering teachers back to school and I'm ordering students back to school. And when is it going to be okay for the select board, a much smaller group of people, to have a live and in-person meeting, just like I'm requiring of everybody else? And uh, uh, I, so I, and just in this regard, um, multiple school committee meetings are already Deerfield's doing theirs in person. Uh, the the, uh, the Deerfield Select Board, I believe, is moving to an in-person thing in a couple of weeks. And we do have an offer from Frontier of a setup of a live in, in the of a room all set up with 20 yards distance between tables and whatever. But the microphones and the cameras all set up in advance and um, so that it can be live recorded live, but, you know, whatever. So but it's just uh, uh, just, just to put it just to put it out there that we're getting that, that that's a thing. For a lot of people, it's a thing that they're watching that um, we're being called hypocrites. I went, I, I went back to my office on Thursday for the first time in six months. And starting tomorrow, actually, I'm going to be in my office two days a week. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I would love to go to an in-person meeting. <laughs> like, I'm so happy. I, if you guys feel comfortable moving to in-person meetings, I'm totally, totally prepared to do that. Wow. I will note that we have the um, the general purpose room in the town hall set up with socially distanced for in-person meetings. And we have a conference line there uh, as well. I'm not sure if you guys are willing. So, so Phil, would, uh, would you like to have the meeting two weeks from today be in town, town hall? If it's okay with everybody else, I... I'd like to at least start doing some of them in person. Yeah, just, let's try it. Um, it doesn't, doesn't have to be all of them, and I and um, you know, I but but I I am, you know, I, I I'm just after you just get called the same thing over and over again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. You just that, want to not. You just want to not get called that thing anymore. Um, so that that's really where I'm coming from. But um, that so that's uh, but but. We're a small little group, and uh, just personally speaking, this steady nine-month diet of uh, online meetings has left me feeling malnourished. And um, but yeah, my only complaint is that I'm on Zoom meetings all day. Uh, you know, so the, uh, uh, we all we all get Zoom meeting out. Yep. Yep. So let's go okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm totally in favor of our next meeting being in person. I'm, I feel safe. So, Tom, in our in our agenda for today, at where we're scheduling the next meeting, we say we're going to be holding it via Zoom. Or is that a commitment, or can we change that? 
can change it. It feels yeah, like of we course you can change it. So let's change that. Sure, then. you can. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Sure. Right. And I don't. We don't have to vote on that, right? I mean, that's just us right. deciding that we can do that. Yeah. That's right. Now, wow. Now that that said, um, we need a way to make it open to the public, well, which is why I mentioned the conference line, because people good. can always call in. Um, and, and I will note that as, as much as everybody loves to hear from everybody and make everybody feel included in the meeting and all that sort of thing, uh, it is, in fact, a select boards meeting. And um, no one actually has a right to speak until recognized by the chair. And uh, it, it can be difficult with a conference line if people who are out there want to break in and say something. And of course, everyone is, is used to being able to do that. So that might take some adjustment. Um, I have not found it particularly useful to have a computer set up as a Zoom meeting uh, when people are all sitting around and one of the people is a computer with yeah. Zoom people we, in it. Um, I, but, but that we, is another possibility. No, we, I, I think a conference call is more than enough. Yeah. We try that, we tried that with one of the union negotiating sessions, and it was highly dis like highly dysfunctional. Um, Not that we want to discourage participation in in local governance, but but I think yeah, we can have a conference line, or even if you know, like I could just have like the Zoom link set up on my phone so people can dial in and we can you know hear it on my cell phone but i'm happy to meet in person we have a conference call line that works great oh yeah so. okay let's do it all right <laughs> sounds good thanks i'll make sure it's set up good thought okay yeah. so yeah. Uh, uh, so our next meeting is then going to be on September 28th, two weeks, and it's going to be at the town hall. Yeah. With a call in line. Sounds great. Okay. Then I, uh, I make a motion that we adjourn. We're done. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Nice to see everyone. Good night, everyone. Nice to see you.